Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to an episode of Tag Along. I'm your host, Bilal Khan, and we have here with us Sheikh Muhammad Mana. Assalamu alaikum. Ayu salam. Are you familiar with Marcus Buckingham? No. Marcus Buckingham, he used to work for Gallup. Mm-hmm. And he was part of oh, the survey. Um, yeah, the, 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 the uh, research uh, foundation. Yeah. yeah. And Gallup poll. Uh, yep, the Gallup poll. And like, they do a number of different things, even like, yeah. even, like the Dalia Mujahid worked, worked for Gallup previously. Yeah. Um, so they do studies and things like that. He was involved with the study with Don Clifton on the subject of strengths. How does an individual discover their strengths? Mm. And so one of the books that he helped produce was Now Discover Your Strengths. And in it, he talks about the idea of how do you as an individual, like mm. know your strengths and go all in on that. Mm. And he basically divided it up into like three or four parts. Mm. And one thing is like, really take a step back, look at yourself. Mm. What are your genuine talents? Mm. What are you naturally inclined towards doing that you do? And But, but, but it's a raw thing. Okay. Right. Once you have that, it could be one thing, it could be a number of things. Okay. But you have to take that That's your foundation. And on top of it, you want to put skills like actual skills that that are, are sharp mm. and knowledge mm. like and knowledge not as in just schooling but knowledge as in like mentorship as mm. in books as in experience uh, exper- uh, experience well ex- not yet experiences mm. but like to know to to, uh, to to gain from the experience of others okay right okay. take do, th- these two things and then when you have that then you apply it into an experience okay right so maybe take a project or something okay like a, a weekend project a, a month project a 90 day project or something mm-hmm. or like even a job you you get you get a job to apply mm-hmm. that skills and knowledge and the idea here is over time over years over decades collect sets of experiences applying those skills and knowledge with the foundation of that talent and the application of that through time through years, through decades, will become your strength. Mm. And then when you have a particular strength, that's like your superpower that because your experiences are so unique Mm. and they're founded within a particular talent that you have that Mm. that's unique to you. Yeah. And I think this is where we need to perhaps, and this is why, you know, somebody who's an introvert might have talents that an extrovert would never have had. Yeah. The, the, neither one is better or or the ideal right. personality type. Um, but that brings me to something really interesting. Talking about strengths, you know, th- there's also the, the aspect of what are my weaknesses. Mm. And and that's also something that, that we learn from Musa mm. is, uh, is, is to identify my points of weakness. Uh, and, and own and, it, right? And 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 be 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 honest yeah. with myself and and honest with with my creator. Um, the, in, the, in the recognizing weakness that comes that. to mind is like. Well, we we talked about it in an, in another conversation where yeah. we talked about Musa being open when he when he talks to Allah and expresses his his fears and, yeah. and his 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 hesitations, right? Um, is could that be a point of weakness? I mean, can we extract from from that? Uh, that uh, um, aspect of, of of Musa and, and of what he says there, that I should recognize what my points of weakness are and and not be ashamed of them, but be open to working on them. Yeah. Uh, the, the, what, the one thing what, that what comes, aspect can I can I improve on? The one, the one the one weak like maybe weakness that comes to mind is like the idea that you know he ha- he was afraid of the fact that he had a knot in his tongue, hmm. right? Is is that what what it was? Was it was it a knot or was it? Uh, was that because I because I'm recalling yeah. from the class? Cause, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. That's something we talk about for for a bit in the class. What did he mean by untie the knot in my tongue? Okay, what is meant by that? Uh, was it a um, and open my chest, right? Rabbi Shahli Sadri wa yasir. Yeah, expand, amri, expand my chest. Yeah. Min yes. Yes. And you know what? I think that's that's that that could be the takeaway. Yeah. Understand this du'a. If mm. break it down for us. So Musa comes to this this place mm-hmm. at this appointed time, and, and Allah speaks to him, uh, and that's where Allah tells him who he is. This is not. Well, this is, is this is, is at the at the foot of of Turi Sina at the Mount Mount okay. Tur. But it's not the burning bush. It's it's where he saw in the distance a fire. Okay. And and he followed the light of that fire, and when he came there, Allah called him. Okay. And he said his name. Okay. He heard his name, which is powerful. Uh. And Allah... That's another point of da'wah. Yeah. To learn the name of the individual you're speaking with. Yeah. Again, that, that's yeah. back to interaction. Having yeah. a, 
like a genuine good quality interaction with this person. Okay. You know? So he learned so he hears his name. He hears his name and and Allah tells him who he is in the an rabbuk. He tells him I, I am your lord um you know um and Allah who la ilaha illa ana fa'budni. He tells mm-hmm. him that I am the only one worthy of worship. So worship me. Establish salah uh for my remembrance and he tells him go to Fir'aun. Then, then Allah gives him his mission. Yeah. W- what he needs to now go and and carry out. And Musa's response to receiving that that mission is he makes dua and he says, Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. What does that mean broken down? So Rabbi shrah li. So Rabbi, my he, Lord. He calls out to his Rabb, his Lord. Uh-huh. And he asks for him to expand and, and open uh, his chest. So shrah li sadri, sadri's you know, chest. Yes. Okay. Sharh literally means to to open something up clearly, to, okay. to, to flatten it out. Uh, it's the word that's used to refer to explaining something. If okay. You, you do a sharh of something, you're explaining it. Oh. But essentially, okay, okay. what do you do when you're explaining something? You're laying it all out. Okay. You're, you're opening it all out there. You're 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 removing any you know. So all hidden these books parts, are a sharh, whatever. A, a sharh of of that text okay. is, is essentially laying it out, explaining, okay. opening it up. Okay. Uh, and that's why the sharh is longer than the original text. Okay. Um. So shahli sadri. Yeah, okay. so he, he asks for that expansiveness of chest. Okay. You know, w- when you receive something heavy, when you have a, a responsibility, you feel the pressure of it mm. on your chest. Mm. You, you literally can feel it. Yeah. Uh, and so when he makes that dua, it's, he's asking Allah to, to expand for him his, his chest and ease for him his affairs so he can carry this mission out. Okay. So he can, you know, do the uh, absolute best that he can. To fulfill this this mission, and he says, min lisani yafqahu qawli. He asks Allah to to untie this knot in his tongue, okay, so that his audience will understand him. Okay, so we speak about that for a little while. We we spend some time with that in 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 the course. What did he mean by untie the knot in my tongue? Is he referring to a physical, an actual lisp or or a speech impediment? Okay, or is he talking about? Um, is the issue here a, a, a matter of eloquence? Okay. Or is it perhaps a language barrier? Okay. Or is it you know um, some some something affecting his ability to communicate effectively? Okay. Um, I mean, the language barrier. We were talking about how he'd been gone for almost over a decade, right? Yeah, yeah. So he's he's been away for a long time, and languages evolve and languages change. Right. Um. That, that's something that that some of the the scholars discuss. Um. So but, okay. Well, what's amazing is what's amazing is that he recognizes these are the hurdles. These are the issues that he has needs to, to overcome okay. to carry out what Allah has commanded him to do. Okay, you know, um, and and that's really a, a beautiful attitude and mindset to have when approaching what Allah commanded us with. And one of the commandments that I'll, because we talk about da'wah, right? Like yeah. Da'wah is, is it a, is it a, is it an obligation on the individual of a community? Both? Plus? Yeah, both. I okay. think, you know, d- depending on what perspective you look at it and, and it's a responsibility. Okay. Um, and, and it's, it's a responsibility and it, and it's also, what that, what that means is that well. if, if we don't, if we if we have the opportunity and we're not fulfilling that obligation, we're at loss. We're at, is it something that we're gonna be held accountable for? Um, yeah, there's there's definitely some some level of account there. You know, okay. um, uh, of course, this varies from person to person because people's abilities vary. Okay, as well, so it's it's hard to make a blanket statement. Their individual strengths and talents and, and knowledge and skills, yeah, all yeah. of that is definitely okay. But even I mean, even more broad than just. Um, Dawa, and I know it's a big part of our conversation here, yeah. Um, and 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 kind of where we started off, we learn a lot of important lessons in Dawa from yeah. from Musa and from from this believer, uh, this believing man. Um, but also just generally speaking, Allah commands you to do something. Allah yeah. commanded Musa, "Idhab ila Fir'aun." Okay, that's that's a that's a command verb. Go. Yeah, you know this is your. Mission. This is your obligation. But he responds. He responds. Yeah. And he responds to Allah, putting his trust in Allah, yeah. seeking help from Allah. Okay. Seeking assistance. He understands that 
the only way that I can fully do what Allah commanded me to do is by asking Allah for help. Okay. Oh, Allah, help me to do what you told me to do. Mm. Okay. And, and approaching the, the, the commandments of Allah with that kind of mindset, that kind of attitude is, is I think, very wise and very very appropriate. You know, one thing we talk about is like he, like there, there, I think there's a reality of Musa A.S. understanding and owning both his weaknesses and his strengths. I say one of the one of the ways of attaining happiness is to uh, ex- uh, um, invest in experiences, mm. right? So it's like one could be happy in trying to build that strength because a collection of experiences yeah. in the app where you're applying your strengths, where you're applying your skills and knowledge, which is rooted in a talent, yeah. uh, becomes a strength. Yeah, that's 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 really in- interesting because Musa learns so much through different experiences. Yeah. So yeah. one could even maybe even say that Musa, I said I'm. Through the challenges that he had, yeah, and through the hardships that he had, but still was a fulfilling life. Yeah, but but he he, w- he didn't you know he didn't um he didn't look to those experiences with a with a, a sense of bitterness mm. or or negativity, um and and those were that was a lot preparing him okay for something great. All those experiences, it, it something always that interests me is. Allah tells us so much about Musa even before, way before he ever becomes a prophet. Yeah, that's true. Before he, he ever becomes a messenger. You know, all of those experiences, all those different phases and different chapters of life that he goes through I think that's even are, are so preparing mo- him for, for... And if you take each one of them all by itself, yeah. it, it may seem insignificant. I, I feel this is a really important lesson that, that Allah is giving us here that, that we shouldn't belittle these different experiences and opportunities that we have that they're building up to something great and important in, in addition to that I think it's also very humanizing yeah but like we talked about humanizing in another video but the fact that we get to learn about this individual and their life yeah. so that when it comes to all these other things we get to appreciate so much more and at the same time it's also a reflection upon us yeah and, and, and that's why when we study the seerah when we study the biography of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we also study a lot about his life yeah before revelation before prophethood yeah that's that's really important would you, would you say it's it's a um a method of raising one's iman by learning about the individuals who are the messengers oh yeah Okay. Yeah, without a doubt. Definitely. And, and, I mean, and it's and logical it, though, right? Because I'm thinking about it, right? Like if you, th- yeah, if you're okay, you have this message. No one, nothing. It's inspiring. It's like nobody's it's worthy motivating. of worship except Allah. Okay, yeah. great. Okay, fine. I understand that. But who said? Who who, who who's mentioning that? Yeah. Right. And it's like well, it's Prophet Muhammad said was mentioning it. He's a messenger of Allah. Yeah. Right. So it's like okay, what makes him the messenger of Allah? Why should I trust him? Yeah. Like it's a logical question, right? Somebody's coming to you with a message. Hmm. What's the credibility of the uh, of, of that messenger? Hmm. And if you learn about their life, you can appreciate so much more. Hmm. And I think this is also a level of dawah, uh, a principle of dawah. Again, I think there's so many lessons that we can come out. So many. It's like if you're con- communicating with someone, can you communicate your own credibility? Hmm. Re- and can you re- establish rapport? Uh, do you understand the nuances? Are you yeah. of them? Well, th- the messengers didn't have to do that Consciously. verbatim, you know, word for word at the time of delivering their message. Yeah, their their lives and their behavior had already established all that, and and their yeah the different experiences established that credibility. Yeah, you know, um, which is amazing. You know, one of the things that we that we spend a lot of time with is uh, the story of Musa getting married. And getting a job, and 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 that 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 lady that he ends up marrying, you know, after a very short encounter with him, yeah, she goes to her father and she recognizes some very important characteristics uh, characteristics of Musa mm. that that he has strength and he's trustworthy, yeah. And the fact that she was now strength can be something a bit more obvious, physical strength that she saw him, you know, accomplish certain things. That would require physical strength, but how did she discern that he is trustworthy? You know, it's it's through seeing how he is behaving, mm. and and once that was established, her father was like, "All right, let's get you married." Right, you know, um, and and it was a it was a beautiful process, and and there was so much beauty in the simplicity of it and in the genuineness of it. Mm. Even though, if you think about it, Musa's coming uh, from a place and from an experience. 
uh, and his his state of being is is probably not one of 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 wealth and of prosperity and of you know Allah knows you know well, what kind I mean, of struggles he was he went homeless through. at the time. He, he's, he escaped. <laughs> yeah, he fled. He was you know? a, yeah. How was would you look if you just fugitive? Fled? You know, it's yeah. incredible. But yet those character traits that he had must have been so apparent and so. Um, uh, you know, prevalent in his in how he carried himself that that they recognize this is a good guy to be married to, and this is a good guy to have, you know, as an employee. You know, oh man, there's so there's so many lessons. Like I, yeah. I can even just pull the. We like, just keep going all night. I know, yeah. right? It's just yeah. like the, the idea because like, what what is he fleeing from? Yeah. He uh, accidentally killed somebody. Right. Right. Yeah. And if you think about it, there's so many people that are in prison, right, who committed a crime. And imagine them being told, "Look, you're a good person." Mm. I would imagine that would be something that's empowering mm. and 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 uplifting mm. for somebody who is in that situation. Mm. And I guess even for him to be told, "Like, look, this guy is strong and trustworthy," mm. like that that must have been uplifting, mm. right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think yeah. I think to just just to come to a close, let's get two takeaways, right? Yeah, I, I think a um, couple of if we were to bring it down, right? I think there's a couple of du'as that we can put into practice, mm. right? Uh, amongst them is uh, the th- what we, uh, the du'a of Musa. Yes. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqadatam min lisani yafqaw qawli. Right? And we're talking about how people, they say this before they got to make a presentation. Yeah. <laughs> how big, big phobia. Big, big, big phobia is, is People would rather fight, die than speaking. than yeah talk publicly yeah um so that's that's one and i think another one is assuming uh assuming we covered the topic beforehand but the dua after we get um yeah uh after we finish the law yeah our beloved messenger taught us yeah. allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatika so allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatika yeah. and we're asking allah asking allah to help us uh, ala, uh, for to, risk. to remember him uh, ala dhikrika, uh, dhikrika, to, to remember, remember him, him and to be uh, grateful to him and to wash, worship him in the most beautiful wa husni, wa husni yes. right yeah so just like how musa was asking allah for help in delivering this message yeah. cool yeah. guys i hope you benefited found value in this um Inshallah. do sh- think of one person that would find value in this just as you have and send them this and uh, and and put what you've learned into practice. I know we discuss a lot of things, but it's not so much about covering everything. Mm. And even actually from from the class that you teach, what would you consider a win for an attendee who goes into Once Upon the Nile, the Epic of Moses, and when they come out of it? Success for me would be a person coming out of the course feeling... Um, empowered and motivated mm-hmm. uh, and feeling that they have the ability to open the Quran and read it uh, and at least you know if, if they feel intimidated by certain sections yeah you know n- not to feel intimidated by the stories in the Quran and okay. to at least start there so Make when that for anybody the place where you springboard from read these stories spend time with them yeah it's okay to read really slow okay it's okay to pause for a long period of time after one word or one verse. It's okay to reread a section, no matter how small, dozens of times. It, that's what we should be doing, you know? Uh, and, and and relating that back to our lives and extrapolating profound lessons, that would be win, you know? Cool. Never mind all the dozens of lessons that we can learn from the actual content and right, the actual right, life right. of Musa himself. Okay. Wallahu alam. All right, guys. Assalamu alaikum.